Okay, thank you. So we'll talk today about a fully uh, compliant strong authentication server for less than $100. So we can make yourself, it will be something like that. So it's pretty nice and, and little. Uh, what we will, uh, just a few words about me. So I'm working in a company called Cisco System de Communication ESA. It's in the French part of Switzerland. Uh, it's a 15 years old company and we are doing security consulting services and uh, customized development, especially for small companies. And uh, we, sorry? Your uh, no, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> but we are working with. <laughs> and uh, we are working for in Linux and Windows uh, solutions. We are doing some open source solutions, also some closed one. But uh, today I talk about uh, the open source solutions. Um, I'm the CTO of the company. Uh, I have a master of science in communication systems, and I have done also a little bit electronics. That's why I like to, to mix a little bit uh, computer science and electronics. So what is the schedule for today? Uh, first, we will see, but you know already why regular passwords are never strong enough. But uh, I will show you some different uh, hardware tools that uh, explain how, why the security, uh, the passwords are not so secure. Uh, what are the different solutions uh, for more security? Uh, we will present, uh, I will present multi-OTP, our open source solutions. Uh, how to set up uh, this device for less than $100. A live demo, it's always cool to have a live demo, uh, with a multi installed on this Raspberry Pi, and at the end, some questions, if you are still alive. Uh, so why regular passwords are never strong enough? Uh, you know, uh, yeah, same password is used for uh, a lot of different applications. So at the beginning, you have your LAN, and after a while, you say, okay, I have also my email, and perhaps you have Facebook, Twitter, a bunch of applications, and uh, you never know exactly, you go on a lot of websites and you, you put always the same password because who knows, you probably forget one, and you never know if it's the Santa Claus on the other side or perhaps not. So uh, on bad websites, they can just steal your password and they record your password and after they try this password at other places. For example, when you ask for an email and a password, some, a lot of people are using the email like Gmail and they put the same password as Gmail. So if you are on the other side, you just can go on Gmail and log on the account. So, and I will show you, even if a lot of people are able to take your, um, your password on the internet, uh, it's also possible in your company. For example, you know probably there is keylogger. So I have, uh, so here is a keylogger model one. So you just put that between your computer and the PS2 uh, keyboard, and it will record all your, uh, your keys. So it's very easy, you put that in the computer, normally the first type of uh, characters will be the password, the BIOS passwords perhaps, and after you will have the Windows passwords. And after you will cover the key one week after, and you have a lot of interesting stuff on it. You have also uh, the camera, uh, the camera uh, in, a key, in a car key, for example. So you have a little camera there. It's not a real car key, but you can put there somewhere near a desk. And after you can see what the people are typing. Okay, this is basic hardware tools. You have some nicer hardware tools. So for example, you have the wireless keylogger. So it's even easier. You can put once your keylogger, this one, for example which is Wi-Fi enabled. And you can say every uh, day at two o'clock, you try to take this uh, access point and you send just what was typed from the day before. So you don't need to be there physically. And uh, you can, for example, go once a week near the building with uh, your uh, portable access point and you can recover the, the different data that was typed. So uh, you know now why your strong password is not good enough. You can have also some fake USB keyboard like this one, uh, mounted in a memory stick. So for example, it's like a memory stick, but inside there is a, a chip that make like a keyboard. It's more or less like what you, you did. And uh, you can put some different uh, firmware, and uh, if the people didn't lock the computer, you can, for example, open internet, download a virus or whatever, you do what you want, install some sniffer or, or something else. And a lot of people, if you are giving a memory key, they say, okay, I have my conference on it, and say people, okay, no problem, poof, I put in the in the computer and it just type everything very quickly. So for, if you don't look at your screen, you have no chance because it's very fast. USB 2, you go very fast. You have also some other tools like, for example, uh, a false access point and stuff like that. So because every of these technology exists, you will definitely have to have a more uh, security solution for your password. 
So what are the different solutions uh, for more security? Uh, we talk about two-factor authentication. You talked already a little bit about that. Uh, a daily usage for this combination of knowledge and possession factors is the ATM machine. Because you have the physical ATM card and, we know, and uh, you know your personal PIN. So you have two different things. You mix everything and that's it. You can access and take some money. Uh, we have also some uh, other solutions, for example, with no software installation, uh, you have a password list, you know that, probably it's a little bit old now, but a lot of banks were doing that at the beginning, you receive a password list and uh, each time you logged in, you take the next password, you scratch it, and uh, the next one will be available for the next time. So this is pretty old, but it works. <laughs> uh, it could be, for example, a backup for some solutions. So you have uh, your paper somewhere and you have at least 10 passwords that will work if you lose your key or whatever. Uh, okay, how works the password list? So you just put your username, your regular password, the next code on the list, and the server has a list of all different uh, generated passwords or perhaps a hash of it, <laughs> and, uh, and it will work like that. Uh, in the, the historical market leader for strong authentication was RSA, uh, and they have their own time-based automatic generator with a secret algorithm, and uh, they had 70% of the market in 2003, now it's a little bit less, and uh, in 2003 they have sold more than 25 million of uh, devices. Uh, you heard probably that they have been, they have leaked some uh, database uh, uh, content so people are not very uh, happy with solutions sometimes. Uh, the first open source one-time password solution that uh, uh, I remember was mobile, mobile OTP in 2003. It's uh, a calculation of uh, a hash with MD5 and uh, it's a mix of a pin code and uh, the time actually uh, going. It's an open source with more than 40 implementation and uh, the initial client was the Java G2ME. You see this uh, old uh, Nokia, you know Nokia already? <laughs> okay. The old Nokia phones and uh, old phones were working also with these. There is a, for now there is for iPhones, you see there, but iPhone is, was only made in 2007 huh? uh, on Android or whatever. So it's, it's pretty nice, but it's uh, an open source, but not standardized. That's why it's not very used in, uh, in a lot of place. But we used that at the beginning. Uh, you have also uh, now better password uh, things. Uh, OATH made initiative for open authentication, made a standard. And the first one was HOTP. So HOTP means HMAC based one time password gallery. And with this, the code construction is based on a hash function. And uh, you have a counter on the left. And uh, when you click on your counter, so you have a seed, a counter, and uh, the password depends of the counter and the special seed you make for each, uh, for each token. So the seed must be unique for each token. And each time you process your HMAC, you will have a new password. So how it works when uh, you are um, connecting on the server? First said, okay, the last password you have used, the counters was 379. So you are the user, you click on your token, click. And perhaps you had the token in the pocket, so it clicked three times without logging. So you have 382. So uh, your, uh, your token is uh, doing the mix, and uh, your, your pin code is, or, or the token, sorry, is 7548112, uh, two. On the server side, okay, the server side know that the last one was 379, so he compute, say, the five next. So five is a window, you can change the window size. So I can compute the 380, 381, up to 384. And uh, <coughs> I check which one was, uh, if one is equal to the, the token from the user, which is the case. So the server say, okay, up to now, all the other passwords are used, and the next available will be the 332697. So this is how the HOTP works, and this is standardized. And so you can uh, certify, certify with that, and you are sure that you have interoperability between uh, tokens and servers. So the next, uh, as I said, the next uh, triad tokens will be uh, starting from 383 position. But it was a little complicated, because when you have the token in the pocket, sometimes you click too many times on it, or if you are very nervous, and after you are unsynchronized. 
and uh, when you try to connect again, it will not work because you, you, are, you have a too big b uh, gap between uh, your counter and the counter of the server and you need to synchronize uh, everything and it takes a lot of time. So they also made in 2000, uh, 2008, yes, a time-based uh, one-time password algorithm. So it's based on the same HOTP uh, algorithm, but now the counter is, uh, is the time divided in 30 seconds or it's 60 seconds. You can choose its uh, parameters. And the um, computing of the token is still the same. So you have the time divided in 30 seconds. You have your seed, which is unique per token, and you make the list. It could be the same if you have the same seed. So how it works now on the server, okay, it's quite very easier. Uh, it's time to have your, uh, your code, so you just click on it, and you are in these 30 seconds. On the server, he compute also a little bit before and a little bit after, because uh, nobody have Swiss watches. Uh, not everybody have Swiss watches, so sometimes you, you leak some, some minutes. So, <laughs> so um, uh, he tried different, uh, a little bit before, a little bit after. He find the correct uh, token, and uh, at the end, he can resynchronize it. Because if he said, okay, uh, I think the token is two minutes late, I, can, I, I know that it's the next time for this user, I make plus two minutes. So you can uh, authenticate and synchronize in the same time. Uh, <coughs> the same, the window synchronization can be set up individually. So when uh, the server say that this password is the same, uh, you just uh, say that uh, up to this password, you cannot use them again. So people cannot uh, try to, to stole your password and give your uh, key back. And that's it. And uh, next time it will go, we, we don't know where. Okay, I show you some HOTP and THTP tokens. So you know probably this, like this one, this is from Outnex or, or Zaxel, or you have the other version from SafeNet, and you have the, the little button, both are HOTP. Or for example, you have, uh, you have uh, credit cards with a display on it. Or you can have also YubiKey, which is also a, a token. This is a bit more intelligent <laughs> because you, you slot in, in a USB and it's like a keyboard. It's like before this one, but this was is a nice one. This was the bad one. Ah, perhaps I have a nice idea. I can try to put the circuit of this one in a YubiKey. That could be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, with the YubiKey, you have the generator in it. You have no battery. And when you click on it, the USB uh, power the whole stuff and will generate automatically a new uh, token. And the token will be written directly like a keyboard. So this is a little keyboard with a token generator. And of course, you have also your mobile phone. So this is uh, the Apple one, but you ha it works for Android and even on BlackBerry. You know BlackBerry? <laughs> Sometimes ago it was some password. You have also some, some other solution like SMS tokens. So first the guy uh, connect and say, okay, I'm a user A, and you receive an SMS uh, like I did uh, right before to have my key for the Wi-Fi. Hey? And after I receive my, uh, my token, I have to send my username and password and my token the firewall, for example, check if the SMS is the correct one by the OTP server, and uh, if it's okay, I can have access to my server or my different services. So let's talk now a little bit about our uh, open source solution, which is called multi-OTP, for multiple OTP. <laughs> um, the history of the multi-OTP package is in 2009, uh, we make a proof of concept uh, by implementing the multi-OTP protocol in PHP. Uh, in 2010, we implement uh, the basic TOTP and HOTP protocol. And uh, in 2011, we do a workshop during uh, ASF uh, in Yverdon. It was an application security forum. In 2012, we have a wider development uh, of the community and we have a lot of feedbacks, even from China. And uh, in 2013, uh, we have had a lot of new functionality like uh, SMS tokens, scratch password leads, QR code uh, provisioning, I will show you that later. Uh, client server implementation with local cache because some people use that uh, in very special ways, so we develop that. Uh, we have also MySQL backend support and uh, we are compliant for OATH certification now. Uh, we are not certified because you have to pay a lot to be certified, but we are compliant with and we have made a, a, a commercial product which is uh, uh, certified. So the library is the same, so it will work also. 
why did we develop the multi-OTP package? So at the beginning it was because uh, no uh, free and easy to use solution exists for uh, small companies because we are, a consult we are doing consulting in computers for small companies and it was just too expensive to have these kind of solutions. Uh, a lot of existing commercial products are, uh, needs a Windows server and a specific Windows server with specific versions etc. So it was very difficult to install it or people don't have a server or not the right one or a firewall that cut all the, the access so it was very difficult. And uh, existing products needs also a lot of resources. I don't know why because uh, you just have to check some, some stuff a few seconds but uh, as they have as, as uh, the back end they have prob probably SQL server or Oracle or what, uh, whatever so it takes a lot of resources for nothing. So why we did that open source? Just because uh, we receive, uh, in this way, we receive a lot of feedbacks and proposals from the users. Uh, security issues are analyzed by other developers, so you have a lot of feedback too, it's very nice. And users can be sure that uh, there is no Trojan and other uh, NSA friendly uh, <laughs> tools in the code. So they can just have a look at the code. And now perhaps you ask, but why did, did you do that in, uh, in PHP? Because uh, there is, so many other nice languages like C, C++, Assembler, I don't know. Uh, so we, we, di we did that in an open source PHP uh, class and also everything embedded in only one file. Of course, when we develop, we have several files, but after we put everything together. Just because the people sometimes when they are not very, uh, they have not a high level, uh, we just try to make PHP, they don't know where to put the files and where to do the required, etc. so we put only one file. Uh, it's OS independent. And uh, it works also on any web server, including in shared hosting. So you can have, from now, you can have a uh, strong authentication server uh, on your uh, website, on any uh, web shared hosting. Data are stored uh, in flat files at the beginning, but you can also choose a MySQL database now. So that was also by design because we want to make a very cheap uh, device after, like this one. So if you put, I don't know, Oracle or <laughs> MySQL, it will not work so much. And if you use, for example, SQLite, which is a database in only one file, and you remove the power at the uh, not the good moment, perhaps all your database, uh, database is crashed because it's a very small device. So we just decided to make flat files. All methods are implemented in command line tool. So we have a separate command line tool, which include the library. And uh, you can do what you want with this one. It's, uh, it's compatible with the centralized uh, open source authentication server free radius, what we, which we use. And it's also available in Windows. The system administrator can create so, uh, scripts in order to handle the package and to create users. Uh, so uh, if you have a list of users, you just uh, make all your lines, one line per user, and you can create all the users you want. Uh, Common standards are supported, so we are doing mobile OTP, which was the first uh, algorithm, but also HOTP, TOTP. We do SMS tokens and also scratch passwords list, which is uh, nice to recover, like we discussed during the pause. HOTP and TOTP software tokens can simply, be, can simply be configured by flashing a QR code. So we are generating a QR code like Google in order to, to provision your uh, token. And uh, hardware token definitions can also be imported. So for example, if you have this kind of tokens, you can import the files and uh, after that, the seeds of your tokens in, is in the server and uh, you can use your hardware tokens too. So you have different of one. At the beginning, we try with the uh, OTNEC definition files, which was a property files, SQL files, so I parsed the SQL. We have a uh, SafeNet definition files and now <coughs> we do uh, any standard PSKC files. This stupid simple web GUI has nothing to do there. <laughs> It's a new feature. Um, under Windows, it's installed in three minutes. So if you have a, a Windows, uh, you don't need a server, even Windows XP uh, is working. So you just surf on uh, multiotp.net, you download the last version. But yeah. you most probably don't, you don't want to run it from a Windows XP box. Exactly, right. but you can. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you can take your uh, XP box and you can put it in the DMZ without any connection to the internet. So <laughs> um, you download the last version. So upgrade to Windows 8, perhaps. It works also. Uh, you unpack the file in the C multi-OTP folders. You can also unpack it in C Bergen, but it's more common to use the r r right name. Uh, you can read, optionally, the readme file if you want, but it's not really necessary be because you have all the steps there. And uh, after you have on Windows to install the free radio service, 
So we make a little script just to install that, and that's it. So you have your, uh, your server uh, up and running <coughs> on your Windows machine. Uh, to create a user on the server side, so it's very uh, uh, easy to do that, uh, because uh, in the command line, you just say multi OTP fast create, and you put the name of the user, and the user is successfully created or updated. And uh, after, you can save the QR code of, uh, of this user, or of this token. So you type multi OTP minus QR code, the name of your user, and uh, the file where you want to put the QR code. And the QR code is created, and that's it. So it's even simpler with the Raspberry Pi edition because I make a little web, GUI, so it's easier to do that, but it's quite easy. Uh, and at the end, you have to send the QR code to the user. Of course, you need to use a secure channel. If you send that per email, it's not so nice. Uh, on the other side... You could use Snapchat, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about... Mm. <laughs> on the other side, how the... the uh, how to provision the token, it's very simple. First, you install Google Authenticator, if you don't have it, and you scan the QR code, and uh, that's it. You have your new user, and uh, based on the, this token. It works? <laughs> Probably it works. It's not yours. <laughs> the QR code is it. Perhaps I have to, to make uh, more zoom, but it works, because I tried before. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, you can uh, install it on Android, iOS, BlackBerry, and if you have other authentication solutions, uh, perhaps you, it's not possible to, to flash the QR code, so you need to take the parameters, which is uh, provided also. Okay, the, the text was there. <laughs> Token is ready, and it works. Uh, on the server now, to authenticate the user, it's very easy. You say multi-OTP, you put the username, and you put the, the token that we receive, and uh, you receive token accepted or token refused. Or uh, we can try, for example, to uh, the same token, and of course, it, it's refused. But we will show that in the demo, because now you don't trust me. <laughs> and you can also create some scratch passwords lists. Uh, so it's also easy. You say uh, minus scratch lists and uh, type the name of the user, and you will receive a bunch of, uh, here, 10, but you can configure it a lot of uh, scratch passwords. So it's, it works together, so you can have a token and a scratch passwords for recovery purposes. At the end, you can also, for example, uh, import uh, hardware tokens, as, as we said, so it's easier to multi-OTP, import, and you put your file, and you will receive the list of the different hardware tokens that were imported, and after, you can link the user with, uh, with any token, and uh, it says okay, and after, uh, at the end, I put a, a pref I enable the prefix pin to have the, uh, the real two-factor authentication. <laughs> okay, so I know I put uh, one, two, three, four, but it was just the sa for the sample. <laughs> you can put more than more than four uh, pins, so it's independent. You can also put alphanumerical numbers. Typical usage, so you can uh, you can have a firewall there, and you have your token f on, on your. Uh, uh, phone or uh, as a hardware token and after you just log on your firewall and you have uh, access to your server and the server as we can see just after could be a Raspberry Pi. So how to set up a device for less than hundred dollars which is the key today. Uh, first we choose uh, the hardware so uh, after uh, se seeing a little bit wha what's going there I found a very very cheap server which is a Linux where we can install Linux. So Raspberry Pi is $35, and uh, you have no o OS license to pay because you can use uh, Debian Linux or others. Uh, it's widely distributed, and uh, you have a big community support. Uh, it's uh, micro USB powered, so you don't even need to have power. I put that in my computer directly. Uh, the CPU is 700 megahertz, but it's uh, ARM-based, so it's not, uh, you had, have not uh, 64 <laughs> bits, but it's still okay for what we want to do. And the RAM is 512 megabytes, and uh, the storage is just a SD card. So you, can, you cannot see, ah, okay, we see it here, because I put a, a little one, so. Okay, so you take your uh, Raspberry Pi, $35. You take uh, your SD card, okay, $10. 
okay, you, you add multi OTP on it, although it will not work. Um, probably you will need also a real time clock, uh, which is about $15. It works with a uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's just because if you have made uh, TOTP uh, tokens and uh, you are not connected to the internet, you will not have the real time on your machine and it will be very difficult to be in the right windows because you will start yeah. probably in 2000. <laughs> so that's why it's perhaps better to have a real time clock. So there is different kinds we support in the library currently, we support two of them. I think there is only two <laughs> on the market. Uh, you need a nice uh, enclosure because it's nicer, you see. Mm. <laughs> and uh, at the end you need a, optionally a power supply if you don't have uh, your, uh, or most of the time the firewall now have a USB port to put for example a 3G uh, key. So just use this one to power your server, it's enough, five watts. Okay, and okay, I was lying. For eighty dollars, <laughs> you have your uh, you have your uh, server. Okay, so perhaps a live demo with a, a Raspberry Pi. So uh, I started already the machine, and uh, okay, what we need is the GUI and perhaps also something to test the radius. So this is the radius uh, client. Here is the Raspberry Pi. So first, I need to log in. So it's a very basic interface. But it's easier for me to do a demo here like uh, as a, with the command line. Oh, sorry, you don't see it, that's the problem. Strange. Um, it's a feature of uh, PowerPoint. Very nice, can I close this? Okay. Here we go. So as I told, this is the uh, this is the web GUI, very simple. And here we have our uh, for the next step we have uh, our uh, radius client just to see if everything is okay. So at the beginning I make the login. Default password is one two three four. Okay, and uh, okay I I can change the password also. <laughs> to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and uh, we can create a user, sorry. So let's, let's say we create the user Bergen. I say create the user. So it make everything automatically, so the minus blah, blah, blah. And now the idea is to provision uh, um, an account so you will be able to use your, uh, your phone. So I just print the configuration file. And uh, we have a little template and all the templates we give some information. So I have generated automatically a pin, 5212. Uh, the name is Bergen. It says blah, 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 a lot of stuff. You can read that later, perhaps. The interesting things is it said that, okay, you will have to have a, a QR code reader, okay? <laughs> Second, you have to install Google Authenticator, so you have the QR code for doing that. And at the end, you have to provision your, uh, your uh, token. So I don't know if somebody have Google Authenticator, there is no virus in it. <laughs> so do you have it or do I have to flash it? Aha. So I will flash it. Because for the rest of the demo, it's important to have the good, good code. Um, here we go. So. So you remember, it just we just have to scan uh, up the QR code. That's it. No. I have big fingers. That was not work. Okay. Good. Okay. You heard. And uh, I say okay. So now I have the user Bergen here. And uh, okay, we can do more, but I think it's not very useful for the demo. <laughs> One is enough. And uh, now let's go on the on the radius client, so I will simulate what our firewall is doing. So the only thing is that I don't remember uh, the pin code. Uh, 5212. Ah, very nice. 5212, okay. Uh, so here we go. 5212, uh, the password, and after I need to put the code, it's 132471. <coughs> It's okay for 30 seconds, it's written here, but as we have a window delay in the server, I can still talk you for 
two minutes before uh, trying the password. But then we do that right now because I have nothing else to do. Uh, so I send the request. In fact, I need to click correctly on the button. Okay, and you receive, and you see there. Okay, it's uh, the, the server which says response access accept. So I'm very happy. I will just try to send the second time the same password. Of course, it says access reject. <laughs> okay, so this is how the this uh, server works. So nothing more because uh, you just have to create users, and after you just have to to check if the users are working well. I think I have a, a last slide for the questions. That is a nice slice, so. <laughs> okay. So do you have any questions about, uh, about that? Or uh, something that is not clear? <coughs> yes. Wait a second. Oops. Yes. Do we provide the possibility to do only QR code? Or, for example, Google Authenticator provides the same thing Ah, you didn't see that, haha, <laughs> because it, it, it was there, but it, it was under. So uh, so the, the question was, do we only uh, provide QR codes, or can we use something else? So I didn't score up to the end of the, of the paper, but okay, it's too wide. Ah, it's still the same stuff. Okay, so I close this one. Come on. And you see here? You have the algorithm, you have the seed, mm -hmm. uh, the number of digit, and the time interval. <coughs> what was uh, your question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. You, you said that your, your uh, uh, time window was two minutes. Can you also configure that for something else? Yeah, yeah, you can configure, in so fact. You can, you, yeah, you can lower it to 10 seconds if you're pricing. You can maximize it to one hour. In fact, 10 seconds is not, is not good because uh, your, uh, your uh, token is every 30 seconds, generated every th seconds. And after, you must be sure that it's, it's synchronized with your device because the time you read the, the things and you write, it's perhaps more than 10 seconds that you will never be able to, yeah. to log in. Yeah. So, but yeah, you, but you have the configuration. Yeah, yeah, you can, the configure, you can configure that. And if it's event-based, you can also fix the window of the event. Mm. Yeah. Yes? Uh, in your cheap Raspberry Pi yeah. setup, um, you said you wanted a real time stop. Yeah. But if you connect it to the internet and have, have NTP, you don't need that, mm -hmm. right? Or yeah, no problem. Uh, there is or, uh, I have already configured NTP on the machines. Yeah. So uh, if you have internet, it's not a problem. Uh, and it configures automatically the real time clock if you have one. So the next time, if you remove internet, you still have uh, the clock. But uh, some people say, okay, it's a strong authentication server. We don't want to put it with uh, access to the internet. That's why they put that in the DMZ. And uh, in this case, you need a real-time clock because if you stop it, you don't you don't have a time anymore. Other questions? Okay. Uh, yeah. What's the uh, default window in your, in your program? Sorry, what is it? What is the default uh, window for OTP for the server side? The different window. Ah, the. Uh, what is the different uh, window size? Uh, uh, what is the default? default? Ah, what is the well, default windows? Yeah. Uh, I think I put 600 seconds for the time-based, and uh, I think it was 50 for the for the event. But you can change that in in a configuration file. But uh, is it some some uh, built-in ground algorithm uh, or? No, because uh, at the big uh, uh, 300 seconds, just because um, the token can can be unsynchronized, especially for hardware tokens. If you are using uh, software tokens, like with the phones, normally you can put that at uh, 60 seconds or perhaps 120 seconds, because normally all the networks are uh, synchronized. Okay, so perhaps you can just change that, but it's just one line. Yes? Uh, you said something about uh, the server synchronizing if yeah. the hardware token was uh, drifting. Yeah. Uh, does your software do that? Yeah. Automatically? yeah. Well, in fact, it's very simple because you, you calculate the, the real token and after you take the first one, the previous one, the second one, the second b before, and when you, when you find it, you say, okay, it was two minutes, okay, so I, I put a, a delta from two minutes in the configuration for the user. And the next time, it will be directly two. And that's specified per user. Yeah, 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 of course, because you don't uh, share the same token normally. <laughs> <laughs> 
good point. Oh. <laughs> You'll be surprised. <laughs> yeah. More questions? Have you looked into integration with other radio services? Like that app? If I tried with other radio services? Yeah. So uh, I had, a, for example, a, s a radio service called Tech Radius on Windows, which is free. Uh, which they have a free version and also a commercial version, and it works also. So I have worked with this guy under Windows because the free Radius was not working at the beginning with uh, Windows. And for the little story, they don't have any external uh, core for, uh, to make authentication, so we sponsored uh, the development for that. Uh, in fact, one of my customers sponsored the, de the development for that, and so we were able to, to make a strong authentication on Windows with another uh, radio server. But now I'm happy to have the free radios because so I have the same configuration file, so it's easier. You can use it on Linux and on Windows. But normally, if you can call an external file, uh, it works. Yeah. Yes? Can one user have multiple uh, valid devices? Uh, if the people can have um, multiple devices, so the only, uh, it's only one token for the moment and a scratch password list and also the, the SMS passwords. So I think it's enough to, to have backups. But uh, I didn't, uh, currently I didn't uh, choose to have different tokens for, for uh, the same people. It's just a choice. I mean, at the beginning I was thinking about yes, no. I decided no. <laughs> okay? Well, okay. thank you, Mike. You're welcome.